Hey everyone, this is Jason, cncdxffiles.com, uh, here with another uh, video, a conversion video on how to uh, do an advanced conversion of a vehicle or a car. Uh, I'm actually using Adobe Illustrator CC, it's the current 2017 version, and uh, so I'm going to uh, start just like I would any other project. I'm going to go into the file drop down menu and I'm going to place the image that I want to convert and I have to find the location of that image first so I know exactly where it is on my my computer uh, we're going to go down here look into the conversions and we're going to go into the advanced car conversion video so this is this will be the advanced car that we'll work on and so we can place it anywhere we want I'm just going to place it up here in the upper left hand image I'm going to hit close and we're going to zoom in must be a very small image of the vehicle here so I'm going to grab that and scale it up and actually we'll go from the window we're going to go to, we'll just click a line click on the transform tab here and things are a little little different here uh, layout not much from the older version but we want to make this, we want to make it 24 inches wide and the reason is that uh, scaled it that way because it wasn't locked, it wasn't constrained so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to actually lock this chain. That's going to constrain it and allow you to uh, size it proportionally. So we'll go 24 inches, hit enter. And now if we zoom out, we'll zoom out and the car has been sized proportionately. Looks like we want to drag it, click and drag it onto the board, uh, the artboard there. So the next step here is we're going to change the opacity. So we're going to click the opacity and we're going to go to about 65, 64, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And then object drop down menu we're going to lock that into place select it uh, all right now if we draw our bounding uh, bounding box around it with our direct uh, or our selection tool it's not going to highlight it if we click on it it's not going to highlight it uh, it's going to tell us where the edges are of it though apparently that's kind of a new feature with this new program so we're going to zoom in here and use the hand tool click and drag it and we can actually minimize this a little bit and move it off to the side so we have more room to work on the artwork. So the first things first with, with any conversion process we're going to take the pen tool, uh, select that and we're going to zoom in a little bit more that way we can kind of get close to the to the outer dimensions of this vehicle. We're going to click and drag into place and we can push in the, the uh, space key here and move that node over. So we'll drag that handlebar out, drag it over and it looks like we have some some smart guides on uh, guidelines that are you know kind of redirecting our, our paths we can probably turn that off fairly easy uh, I'm gonna just work with it here there we go and it looks like we have a white fill color so we want to take the white fill color out we'll take that out of there and uh, we'll click that again click on that last anchor point Click and drag, you know, reposition the vehicle so we can get down along the, the bumper here, or at least the fender. Trying to get it as close as we can. And you always want to drag this handlebar into the into the direction of the next path that you're going to place. So there, we just kind of move it to there. And we're just getting as close as we can. We can always go come back at a later time and, and edit that. Any of these nodes that we're putting on here, we can edit it. We're just kind of moving our way down along the vehicle. Not spending too much time doing it. Move this down again. Pull that angle into there. Click and drag, click and drag. And uh, you can use the Alt key when you're clicking and dragging. When you hold in the Alt key, you can swing these handlebars anywhere you want. So that's a really important part of it is to learn how to really swing those handlebars uh, so you can get the next path right in the area that you need it to go kinda of hard to tell what's going on down in this area because there's so much shadowing so I'm just gonna approximate what I'm what I think I see <coughs> excuse me do that and we'll just continue on Around to the front here where the tire is at and actually I think the tire is going to be probably back in here so we'll put that 
there. Do something like this. And that doesn't exactly look correct, so I'll have to go back and, and kind of address that before we're done with the creating of this, this file. But we want to get it as close as we can, and there's a lot of shadowing, a lot of shadowing in this image, so there's a lot of a lot of approximation that you're going to have to do to really get it to look right. But fortunately, with this program, you can you can go through and and change those nodes quite easily. There we go. This isn't exactly on the line, but the only person that's really going to know is is myself and, and the viewers out there that are watching this video. There we go. Place that in there. We'll head up this way with this. Do that and finish with the last anchor point right there. <clears throat> We're going to use the hand tool, scroll back down around, and with the, di the direct select tool, we're going to grab this little anchor point and we're going to kind of move it over and move this one over as well. So I think, I think that looks a little more realistic as far as the tire goes. We can actually move that anchor point down a little bit as well. And I'm doing all these modifications with the, the direct selection tool. <coughs> Zoom out here, click on it, highlight it, and we can add a fill color here, change it to black. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the opacity of that down. The slider, we can change it down with a slider or we can manually put it in there, but whoa, let's go a little bit darker here. There we go. And we'll go object and we're going to lock that into place. Next step on the process here of conversion is is uh, isolating the big fallout pieces that are going to fall out when you actually design it out so you want to change this to no fill color and use the pen tool again and we're going to click in here and we're going to have some of these pieces drop out from in here and again we're just using using the pen tool and we're just following the, the lines that we have provided to us by, by the actual image. Go around the chairs here. Let's take a couple seconds to do this. Over to there. Over here. And I'm really being careful just to just to capture the dropouts that are actually going to fall all the way out. With that Alt key, I change the direction of that handlebar. That way, it works a lot smoother. can kind of connect it back up pull that into place all right so now if we if we zoom out we have a big we have one of these big cutouts that are or dropouts that will actually drop out so let's take a look at that and we can actually change the fill color into white and so now that is the major major cutout now what we can do because there's a lot of highlights on this vehicle we can actually highlight some other little cutouts to kind of frame in uh, the look of the vehicle so this is going to be largely uh, a process where you're going to uh, do a lot of trial and error with, with the actual highlights of the vehicle. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of highlighting uh, in these areas around the grill. You know, any of the, any of the metal really kind of shows up, so we can have some of those pieces drop out. So I think what I'm going to do here is from the grill, I'll use that pen tool, and we'll isolate these little pieces right here. They're fairly large, so these would be good pieces to actually have drop out. Go over to here, and then back over to here, and that. And then we can click on that again, and we'll 
isolate this one on this side as well. So these will be highlights that will actually just kind of drop out of the finished project. So that's going to look very nice. And what we can do is we can use this pen tool and I'm just going to make a, a line like that. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'll click on it and I'm going to change the stroke to black, which it already was, and then we'll change the line weight to 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625, hit enter. And so this is we're going to represent the width of a single line cut path. So with that, what we'll do is we'll take a path here and draw this to here. And that's going to give us kind of the, uh, the look of this light on this side. We'll change the, the fill color to nothing in there. And then we'll change the, the color of the line weight to white. And that will help represent the lens of that bulb that's on that side. And we can go over here and we can kind of do that uh, with, with, these, with these headlights too. So what I like to do with, with headlights is I'll use the ellipse tool and I will draw it and then I'll draw another one over here this is a slightly bigger one and we want to just kind of pull them into place where they look normal and I'm actually going to add some breaks here so we want to find uh, the scissor tool and we're going to break it here and we'll break it right here we'll delete that out and then same with this side right there and you got to click right on the line and we'll delete that out. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to kind of square this up a little bit. There we go. So now when we zoom out, we've got a couple highlights here and pieces that are actually going to drop out. And then we have some single line cuts to create some of this interior detail. So when I'm looking at this vehicle, I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of light reflecting off of this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to capture some of that. So I'll just click on this uh, object. It's going to load all that information in there. It says that it's white filled and it's got a stroke that's already preset. And then if I hit the, the pen tool, I should be able to just start moving. And what it will do is it will actually preload that information from the object that I, I just uh, selected on. So let's go like this. follow that kind of line right down in there. So this is going to be a, another little highlight and then looking here towards the, the fender looks like there's a lot of highlighting back there so I'm going to do something similar try to capture some of that uh, the highlighting the natural light that's that's reflecting off of this vehicle. We'll do that and we can even maybe extend this over this way a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bump into the into the curvature of this mirror and by using this dropout we're going to kind of define where that mirror is as well so let's zoom in here a little bit and kind of show you what I mean by that so I'm catching the edge of this mirror in with this dropout so that's going to really help frame it in there I'm going to pull this over into this area I'm just kind of making these lines kind of match up. So that looks that looks pretty good to me. That's a nice highlight. And then there's also this nice really big highlight right on this rear fender. And we'll, we'll capture that too. So I'll click on that, uh, that object. That way we load the preset information in there. Then we'll click the pin tool again. And let's see, we'll click here. Move into this area into here, over into this area, and then we'll extend this down a little bit further than what it actually does. And so when you have the fill color sometimes it blocks you from seeing what's underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, direct select tool, click on that node, I'm going to bring it up, up to here and kind of straighten it out. That way it forms that shape use the hand tool. I'm going to click on this this single line cut path, click the pin again, and I'm going to draw 
or capture the 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 I guess it would be the fender well of the car here. Okay, so we've got we've got some interior detail now, some some dropouts, and you know as you're capturing these highlights, you know some of them you may like and some of them you might not like. So uh, you can always delete them out if you don't like them, and you can always adjust them and, and draw them in other places. So I'm not exactly sure what this is in here, but it's definitely a highlight. I think it might be a, a running board or or something along those lines. So I'm going to try to capture that too. It's got the 0 0.0625 weight, so I want to change that to 0 0.001, and then we'll add the fill color, uh, the white fill color in there. Okay. Let's see. Kind of zoom out. And we've got a lot of nice little single line cut paths that we can we can really capture. So I'll use the pen tool here. I'm going to go from here. Down into this area. Actually, I'll move it over to represent kind of the door. There we go. Use that selection tool and kind of move that up a little bit. Because we've also we've also got the front fender wall here that we want to capture too. <coughs> I'm just pulling it into place here, trying to do the best I can. And you can zoom in uh, to get closer closer to the detail if you want. Zoom in a little bit more here. Use the hand tool, reposition it, and zoom in a little bit more. We'll click on this cut path again, load that information one more time, and we'll capture that arc. And then we also have some lines going from the fender to the, the head headlight assembly here that, that I'd like to capture. Something like that. So we're just following along with the existing line structure of the vehicle. And instead of going all the way around, I'm just going to kind of make a make a break right there. I'm going to add a line here, and I think I'm going to click on this right here, and we're going to load that, and we're going to capture this as a dropout as well. That, that node's getting pretty close to that corner, so we've got to be careful that we leave plenty of material on this side. That way it doesn't break out. Okay, I'll resize that. And now we'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to take a break right there. And pop. So the next part of the design work here is I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit more. I'm going to zoom in. Let's zoom in here. Use the hand tool and move, move it to where we need it to be. I think I zoomed way, way in. Let's get up here to where the artwork's at. This way, maybe. There we go. All right. Such a big artboard, I lost my artwork. All right. So now we're back in here on the car, and we're still focused on uh, getting some of these interior lines cut. So we'll use the pen tool again. I'm gonna go from here down to the to the grill, and then we'll go from here and kind of get this little part down the center of the hood and again we're just following following the existing lines the structures of the vehicle itself it's like it's like we have something in this area I'm just going to kind of swing this back over here kind of like this And see what that looks like. Oh, that looks kind of funky, so I'm actually going to use 
uh, the delete ink point tool will delete that right there. We'll just leave this right here, this little little cutout. Let's see. We'll use the pen tool again here. We'll go from this side. We'll catch that right there, and use the direct select tool and pull it pull it in a little bit. That way, when we zoom into this area, there's still a, a pretty good amount of material between here and here. And actually, we'll bring it in a little bit more. That way, we make sure that line doesn't run into the the, out, the main outline, the main silhouette. We'll zoom out a little bit more. And this is kind of crossing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scissor tool. I'm going to cut this and delete it. And then we'll use the pen tool again here. this and over there use the direct select tool move that a little bit I'm going to move this back up away from that line as well that way we don't have intersections or anything that's going to overlap so now we kind of have a pretty good idea of what the vehicle looks like we'll zoom in one more time here seems like we have kind of a, a line that's going from here to here as well so I'm going to try to capture that and see how that looks I think that looks a little more accurate there we go okay now what we want to do is we want to pay a little more attention to the headlights here zoom in a little bit more use that single line pen tool here to here maybe into this area back over into here and then we'll continue on and, and put another cut path in here Curve it back up to this way. Don't want it to get it too close to that cut path up there, so we'll do that and we'll take the handlebar and we'll shrink it back in there like that. I'm going to use the direct select tool and manually move this around. And then what I'll do is I'll use the, actually, we'll click on this, load those preset information. We'll use the elliptic ellipse tool and we're going to draw an ellipse in here and then we're going to draw another ellipse in here. And we're leaving plenty of room between the cut paths so that nothing runs into each other. Let's see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this side, over to the other light bulb side here, or the headlight. And I'm going to draw an ellipse here. Kind of stretch it up this way. And I'm going to use a scissor tool. Cut here and here. Select that with this direct select tool and we'll delete it out. And then what we'll do is we'll use the pen tool, click on there, and click on there. There we go. Perfect. So now the headlights of the vehicle are done, completed. I'll zoom in a little bit more here. Zoom in a little bit more. And what we have is we have some, some fins uh, along the along the grill here. So I'm going to try to capture some of those, and I'm just going to copy and paste, copy and paste, we're just going to copy and paste those into place. So copy and pasting, and then we're dragging them over into place. kind of make sure that we space these really nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these and we're going to go up here to the align tool align and I'm going to minimize that all right so that that vertically align the center of them which I don't know if I want to do that just yet there we go Horizontal distribute center is the one that I used. And that worked pretty good. I'm going to click this uh, object and we'll use those that information. And we're actually going to do another cutout on this side for our drop away piece. Down to here, from there to there. Kind of pull it into place here. And then we don't want to forget the main the main outline here. like 
that. So now let's, let's kind of zoom out. So that's one of the grills. And we can kind of work on getting capturing the detail on the other grill here. I'm going to click on this single line cut path. We'll load that information in there again. Copy. Actually, I don't think we'll copy and paste. We'll just draw these individually this time because they're already fairly spaced out, fairly even, or at least they should be. So as long as we draw down the center, they should be fairly even in their placement. You know, there's a lot of other information in this in this design that you could try to capture, but with the plasma cutting process, cut widths are, are just too big to, to let that happen or for you to achieve it without making this design really, really big. But that's all right. We're, we can still get a lot of detail in, in a fairly small area. There we go. Click there. I'm going to move this around a little bit. One more cut path here, and then like on the other side, I'm going to select that, and I'm going to draw this in a little bit down here. Something like that. Click that single line cut path again, load the information, and we're going to draw this down and around to really isolate this headlight and, and get all the nice line symmetry out of it and I'm going to direct select this line and, and move it around a little bit that way there's plenty of room between the cut paths I can actually shorten this one up a little bit okay now we can zoom out here so now the grill is done and that looks pretty pretty darn good we also have I notice here once I zoomed out we also have some lines right at the bottom here so I'm just going to draw one line in between it there we go now uh, from there what we can do is we can actually we can isolate this part of the vehicle down here something like that and then draw this down and around here and this this particular area down in here could be an area where you could isolate you know some bigger drop aways as well and I think we'll do that here in, here in a moment once I get to it down to here Okay, that's that looks pretty good. This line isn't entirely accurate, so there we go. Move that around a little bit, just a little bit. A little slight differences make it make a big difference. So we're just capturing the existing line symmetry of the vehicle. Looks like there's a bit of a line back in this area too. And it appears that there might be something in this area as well. So we'll do something like that as well. And I think this is actually the front of the fender. So I don't see the line in there to capture, but that's okay. Let's go up here and we'll capture some of this. back in here now nah, we'll just delete that out sometimes the detail is just too fine there we go what else do we want to do down in this area we can actually move this a little bit away from there there we go Looks like maybe there's a headlamp or a lens in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool. We'll select on the drop away. We'll do this. We'll 
draw this in here. I'm going to just kind of draw it around where this existing line is. And then what we can do is we can use a scissor tool and click from here over to here. And then select that path and we can delete that out. So now we can zoom out here. Don't look too far out. There we go. So maybe there's a light there. Zoom in a little bit more and it looks like we have another path down here that we can capture coming off the bottom of the fender over there and it looks like there might be something in this area that we can capture as well so I'm gonna see what that looks like might look really good okay let's see what else we have here we have some well, obviously we still have the tires to do here but what I would like to capture is this nice big long long line in here goes up this way and I think it goes up to here as well I think that's part of the door yeah that's that's the rear door here so I'll put this in here constrain it like that so that's going to be the rear door and for the handle I'm just going to put a an arched line like this that kind of shows you where it is I don't like the way that one looks but let's zoom in here a little bit better and get a better handle on it. There we go. It's actually more of a straight handle. What you can do is you can add this little piece underneath. It kind of shows you that maybe it is a handle, more of a handle. There we go. We can zoom in a little bit more here. Use the hand tool here and we can move, move stuff around. I think there might be a light. I think this is some kind of light in here. So what I'm going to do is use the pen tool. Just try to capture that as close as I can. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we're getting most of the most of the interior detail captured. Uh, just zooming out here, kind of moving quickly, and going here into the dashboard area. this I'll click on it and we have looks like a big visor of some sort here in the dash or part of the dashboard that we want to draw so we're going to draw that in there we can actually draw maybe a part of this seat that goes down in here we can draw the other part of the dashboard over to this side and we can actually capture steering wheel here so we have part of the frame that comes down through the seats that we can capture back over to here and of course we have this, this uh, rear view mirror that we can we can focus on how that mount that uh, rear view mirror is actually mounted you don't want to get too close to the existing lines there the existing cut paths something like that I'm going to back this cut path back away from this one I'm going to follow this back into here and we're going to add a little more detail for the convertible top I don't want to put it in too close with other lines, but that's fairly good. And let's see, we'll capture part of this in here, I guess. It's part of the seat. We can go back to here. I think that's looking pretty good. We have a little bit of, a little bit of detail that we need to capture right in here. And then what we can do is we can focus on, on the lines that are coming off the windshield here. So they come kind of along this way, and they're going to go up towards the top of the frame, just like that. And I don't think we need to have such a big 
angle in there. You want kind of a smooth, smoother transition. We'll zoom over here. I'm going to draw another nice big archway, kind of follow the existing line, or existing outline, the main outline, back in there. And I'm going to add a little more, another line in here to, to really detail that rear view mirror. And let's see, we'll zoom out a little bit and see what it looks like. So, looks like we're capturing most of the detail. Uh, the only thing left here really to work with is the rims and the tires. So, I'm going to look, take a look at the tires here. We'll zoom in and kind of get an, a feel for what we want to do with it. So, with something like this, I, I think what, what I might try to do is I might try to focus on these black areas and use those as the reliefs. So we're going to have these black areas actually drop away. So we'll click that uh, object, any of these objects, and preload that information with the, the white fill color. We use the pen tool. So we're going to focus on cutting out these, these parts of the rim here. There we go. And this is going to kind of go back into this area. So these two pieces are actually going to overlap. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a cut there and a cut there and we'll delete that out. That way that piece is not overlapping it. Okay, we're going to re-cut re it here or draw it again. There we go. And this actually has the .0625 line weight. We want to change that. .001, enter. We want to change that to white fill color. I'm going to do it again, come down to this, this piece, and we'll get this one cut out the way that we want to, like that, and then we have this piece in here, something like that, there we go, I'm going to move this one back this way a little bit, that way that looks like it's a little more slanted. I'm going to move this over in here. We can adjust these. That way we have kind of a, a nice radius in that area. You might have to mess around with it a little bit to really get it to look perfect the way that you want. But I think that's fairly close to what we're wanting. There we go. And then what we can do is we can actually take the single line cut go from here to here and we can go from here to here same with with each one of these spokes and I'm going to cut some of this out of the way delete it use that that to that there and then we're going to use this as the final cut path here on this one and then we'll use the uh, the ellipse tool again and uh, you're going to want to put some cuts in there that way that whole piece doesn't cut out we'll delete that and then again we'll grab the ellipse tool <coughs> and we're going to draw along this outer rim here and try to get as close as we can to what it looks like here so I think that's fairly close uh, not, not too awfully close let's move let's manually move this one over this way too far back over this way there we go so what we can do is we can cut that out move that over here and manually manually move it into place so I think that looks, looks pretty good um, what we can do is bring this up just a little bit more and we're going to isolate some of this information in here and capture some of those some of those lines that are coming off each one of these spokes not too much you don't want it to get too crowded in there but you definitely want to capture some of it that way it, it looks looks very realistic Okay, so now that tire, let's see, we'll zoom out, 
looks pretty good. I'm still not too happy with, with how these cutouts look. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to show you something that's you know a little more advanced than what most people uh, get to see. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to set this over here. Something like this. So from this point, I've drawn an ellipse over it. And I'm going to click this, click this, click this, and click this. I'm going to copy and paste those over here. Now, I'm going to change the fill color, and I'm going to change the line weight uh, to black. And we'll go 0.001, hit enter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, select that main elliptical cut path, and we'll go object, arrange, bring to the front, and then object, path, divide objects below. So now what we have is I'm going to select this, 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 and this right here. I'm going to go object group, remove these over, and these are the imperfections that are really making this not look so great. So this has been grouped and we're going to move it over into here. And so now what we can do is we can select those pieces in the back. Okay, so now these pieces are in that place, so we'll add the fill color, the white fill color to them. And now when we zoom out, it looks a little more believable. It looks a little nicer. All right, so we've got the, got the rim kind of squared away on this vehicle. Now we want to get the radius, the outside radius of the tire put in there. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to change the fill color out to white, change that to white, the stroke to white, and then we're going to change the stroke weight to 0 .0625, 0 0.0625, enter, and we're just going to move this to where we, we want it to be. Quite challenging to move this stuff into place, so I'm going to cut there. I'm going to cut there on that, and I'm going to delete that out. And the rim looks like it's close to that area, but I'm going to shrink it down a little bit here and see if we can get it a little bit closer. And then I'm just going to click that line there, use the pen tool. I think I'm going to make a, a reference line in the front here on this front tire. Now if we zoom back, yeah, it's looking pretty good. We don't want to zoom too far out. I'll zoom in here. And now we've got three quarters of the vehicle done. And uh, the only thing that we need to contend with now is this rear tire and, and how are we going to capture the, the cuts in this rear tire. So since there's not a lot of room back here, what I would do is I would suggest Doing something like this, where you're just using single line cut paths to isolate where those spokes are at, and then you could even you know, isolate a little bit more here. Of course, you got the rear tire. You don't want to go too too much over over with the, the design work. I think I'm going to delete this one out. I'll delete this one out and I'll redraw it. But you don't want to have these cut paths too close to each other. There we go. I think that looks better. And what we'll do is. And draw down this way, and kind of back up this way, kind of give you an idea of that there's a rim in there. There we go. Use this pin tool here and go down along the tire here. And this this corner of this tire doesn't look very convincing, so I'm going to object unlock everything, and I'm actually going to click on that, and we're going to use. Uh, the anchor point tool here to kind of round that around a little bit. We can move it over here, and I think that looks a lot more convincing. All right, let's zoom out here and see what we have. We'll add some color uh, to that main silhouette and change that opacity from 28% all the way up to 100%.
and there we go that's what the what the vehicle looks like now that we've taken the time to capture all the interior detail let's see I'm going to I'm going to click on the main image behind everything doing this and I'm going to lock that into place object lock selection and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy edit, copy edit paste so we have a copy of it and I'll draw, draw my bounding box around everything up here object lock selection so now what we have is, is we have an object here that we can convert into a DXF file and to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic wand tool I'm going to click the single line cut paths and I'm going to go object group and once I group it I'm going to draw a bounding box around again uh, edit copy edit paste Move this over to here. Click on it. Click or click the cut paths that are grouped. And we're going to go object. Click on stroke. Change the cap to round. We'll go object path outline stroke and draw a bounding box around everything here on this side. Hold in the shift key. Select the main image from behind and uh, click it again. And what we should be able to do is go to Pathfinder and minus the front. And so now this image, if we take out all the fill color and just leave it as a black, uh, black weight, 0 0.001 line weight, this is the design that you would cut with a plasma, or not a plasma, but a water jet or a laser. And this would be the design that you would want to cut with a uh, plasma or a router system. So we're going to change the fill color out of here, change the line weight to black. Uh, and the actual line weight color to black and then the line weight to point zero zero one enter and now if you click off of it you have two images of the same design the one on the left plasma and router the one on the right here is water jet and laser and what we want to do is we want to draw a bounding box around it with that selection tool object ungroup object ungroup until you can't ungroup anymore file go file export export as I'm going to go AutoCAD interchange DXF and we're going to go advanced car I'm going to hit export and we want to change this to 2000 scale 1 to 1 change it down to 8 choose JPEG maximize the editability and export selected artwork only and we'll hit OK and that is how you create a, a cut ready DXF file in, in Adobe Illustrator uh, CC. I'll stop that right there.